Uganda passed a bill punishing LGBTQ plus people with death. Uganda's parliament has passed a bill imposing the death penalty for homosexuality. Homosexual sex was already punishable by life imprisonment under Ugandan law. The new bill, a revived version of the LGBTQ, anti-LGBTQ plus legislation that was nullified by the East African Nations Constitutional Court in 2014, will make aggravated homosexuality a capital crime and imposes a life sentence for, quote, recruitment, promotion, and funding of same-sex activities, end quote. According to Human Rights Watch, the proposed law is the first to make identifying as LGBTQ plus a crime. The bill passed with overwhelming support. Only two of the Christian majority nations, 389 MPs, voted against it. One of the two MPs who opposed the legislation said, quote, The bill is ill-conceived, it contains provisions that are unconstitutional, reverses the gains registered in the fight against gender-based gender violence, and criminalized individuals instead of conduct that contravenes all known legal norms. The bill now goes to pres the president, who has not said whether he supports the legislation. However, he has signed previous anti-LGBTQ plus bills into law. Uganda is one of the 30 African countries in which homosexuality is criminalized. According to The Guardian, more than 110 LGBTQ plus Ugandans, including a disproportionate number of transgender individuals, reported incidents including arrest, sexual violence, evictions, and public undressing to the advocacy group Sexual Minorities Uganda in February. Two things. One, uh, which is not, uh, I didn't read into the story, is that the US government has already threatened withdrawal of all foreign aid from Uganda in response to this law, which is what every Western nation should do. Uganda largely depends on foreign aid. Without foreign aid, that country is based, that country GDP might as well be cut in half. So right now, Western nations need to do their thing. Of course, I'm also extremely relieved that this is coming up during a Biden presidency. Let's face it, the last president and his supporters would have cheered on this law. It would not, they wouldn't have opposed it. Well, they the would have- The secretary just signed in to law. Yeah, I mean, after, after all, if Sarah, if Huckabee Sanders would actually would, can enact that law right here in Arkansas, she would. Yeah. Oh, but remember, for sure. The, the, the most remarkable thing about this law is that just literally identifying as LGBTQ is now a crime. It is not that I need to have sex with someone of the same gender. It's just the acknowledgement or even announcement to anyone that I'm gay that someone can go to the police and report it, and I'm now and I can be arrested. This is absurd. Mm -hmm. This is uh, criminalizing someone for basically who they are, not even what they've done. And that's, like the MP said, has no legal basis in known civilization. Right? So this is another place we need to look at is over in Africa. You mentioned earlier mm -hmm. Florida, looking at Florida as the test, mm -hmm. you know, the test tube, so to speak. I don't remember where I heard this. I know it was from a reputable source, but there are legislative think pots in America yes. that ship this crap oh, yeah. over to Actually, Africa and get it passed. If you, th it will, they, they want to do it here. Oh, they want to do it here badly. Oh, exporting hate is real. And yes, uh, associations such as a lot, quote unquote, Alliance Defending Freedom and Heritage Foundation, right. all those all those organizations have been shipping model legislation that anti-LGBTQ uh, anti to the states and exporting it internationally. They recruit the most homophobic preachers, rile up people in a country where people are ignorant about sexual orientation, gender identity, and cast us into, you know, I mean, it's, it's the same thing they're doing right here, calling us groomers, mm -hmm. casting aspersion that all LGBTQ plus people are child molesters. Mm -hmm. are, it's the blood libel that Anita Bryan has invented. And that never gone away. I mean, whatever it is, aggravated homosexuality is or isn't is really hard to. I mean, that is, I'm not it's, to define something like that is actually almost impossible. But that is, I, I, I am grateful for this part of the conversation too. That is to imagine 
um, you know, the funding, if we're to think about it, not just in, in terms of foreign aid, but the funding that's done by, by these really fundamentalist groups in the United States and elsewhere um, who are, are often, I mean, I don't want to kind of minimize homegrown movements either. That is that there is a great deal of support in places like Uganda for these kinds of, of, of this, for this bill, for example. Um, but so too, so much of that has been exported from the United States, from other places, and like it's a form of neocolonialism. I mean, right? I just, that is, we can't separate those two ever. I just want to add that uh, if from, ironically discussed from Massachusetts, Scott Lively, who was yeah, a very, very it. vocal fundamentalist mm -hmm. preacher who claimed that Nazis are gay. He literally wrote a book called The Pink Swastika, mm -hmm. claiming that Nazis yeah. are literally gay people in order to basically associate us with Nazis. And he is one of the first person who actually exports this kind of mm -hmm. rhetoric alongside with his, funda uh, his fellow Christian fundamentalists yeah. and Christian nationalists over in Africa. Yeah, well, interesting uh, how he picked a pink swastika while ignoring the pink triangle. Mm. Right. right. I will say I'm an aggravated homosexual. So if you want to know what one looks like, <laughs> we all, right here. Now we know. Now we know. We know. I'm an aggravated homosexual. Um, no, seriously, the you know you made a really good point that the United States and other Western countries can use the power of the purse to influence public policy in other countries. This is one area where we really need to step up and do that. But think about how much it undermines us in those countries for proponents of this law to be able to point to Florida, to Arkansas, to other conservative states that are trying to oppress LGBTQ people. Yeah, it, it totally undermines our position. We, you know, I'm also very thankful that. President Biden uh, is president right now and can use the power of the purse, but uh, we really need to hold ourselves accountable so that when we stand up on our soapbox, we can speak with authority. One thing to keep in mind yeah. uh, when we say let's cut off um, U.S. aid, yes, it's a mighty purse, but it also opens the door for China and Russia sure. to come in yeah. right. and basically buy up. They've been buying, ever since the end of the Cold War, they've been buying up you know, poor third world countries for their oil, uh, building their bridges, their infrastructure. And if and if we pull out all together, we j really just leave them open. Well, may I interject though? Uh, as an expert on international relations, I will say that China, much less likely Russia, is the culprit here. China is buying up Africa. China is buying a large swath of Africa. Mm -hmm. They're building roads in those countries, basically in exchange for mineral rights. And often, such as Sri Lanka, where they build a port, but slap a contract so onerous on the Sri Lanka government, they literally run the government out of money. Mm -hmm. This is exploitative. This is economic colonialism. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and in a way that, you know, the African nations should beware that, yeah, we, they might not want to play by our rules as Western countries by, you know, not writing laws that condemn gay people to death, but you want to you want to ride with China? You're signing you're signing a contract with the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not here encouraging them to go to, go to China. <laughs> no, but I'm that's, saying, that's, that's, that's what's what's going to happen. That's, that's, that that's what that's what that's what's going to happen. Yeah. But we will continue to follow um, this and other developments in the African um, in Afri Africa. Africa. Plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.